Hello, and welcome back to Disco Elysium, The Ballad of Officer Superstar. The last thing we did was interview Classy, which is not how her name is pronounced, but of course I'm American, and so all I speak is English instead of any foreign languages at all. We learned that she wasn't actually raped. She claims she was actually in love with the hanged man, or at least was a lover of his. He did not rape her. Anyway, the next step for today is to go ahead and try opening this door. small, heavy door. No lock in sight. So the problem here is I've already added the one point we possibly could and we still only have 17. So our physical instrument is just garbage. It's a white check. Let's just try pushing it. It's barred from the inside. Oh. You hear the bar rattle in the brackets. Okay, we're going to return like to this. It's heavy too. Very sturdy. It is a white check. Let's just try it. Ow. I could have predicted that. We're going to take some health damage. You kick it, gung-ho style. <laughs> Entering the premises, style. But the door fails to respect the force. All you hear is the bar rattling inside, laughing at you. Yeah, even when you fail, sometimes it's hilarious in this game. All right. Let's trash the place. <laughs> she says approvingly. It's not. Yeah, I don't think we should. Your foot is ready to explode and punish this object <laughs> okay let's charge our health and do it again disrespecting the force <laughs> we just got a trophy enemy of the physical realm disciplining <laughs> we taught that door it's pain and groveling is much to your liking oh we healed our morale we didn't need it but that was super worth it suck on that door <laughs> Okay, if we ever want to open this, we need to add to our physical instrument. Where does this lead to? I don't know, Lieutenant Euphrater. He makes a note. It is not the first closed door we found in this building. There is also your mysterious blue kitchen door. Do you think it's important? I don't know. The further we get, the more this building seems to be tied to the case. I agree. Below, the hostile cafeteria creaks and groans under your added weight. A skeleton of composite support beams and cantilevers. All right, let's tap on the roof with our foot. A dull thump. Somewhere inside, a wind brace rattles from the imperceptible motion of the building. The vigilantes, the cadaver, and a number of people connected to the case are in or around this building. This door is part of it. It's not unimportant. So maybe the door below is a mega investigation. No, still a mini investigation. <laughs> he pretends to make a note in his notebook. God damn it, I love Kim. All right, I'm going to put our other shirt back on. All we did was change that. And we're good to go there. And now we are going to go talk. Oh, it looks like we got another point. We have six. I'm not going to do anything with that yet. Let's check the status of our... We have... Oh my gosh, I forgot this was going to take a long time. Okay, let's go talk to Titus and the Hardy Boys now that... Classy has informed us that nothing untoward happened between her and the between her and the victim and also who uses the term untoward in this century. Hey okay, downstairs, let's go find the Hardy Boys. They should be hanging out. It's only 2 in the afternoon. Should we check to see if this door has freed up at all? You see a heavy steel door with a prominent dimpled lock. It's painted blue. You immediately feel drawn to the color. Blue is for mystery. Is it? I thought it was for sadness. Let's try pushing it. The door does not budge. All right, our shenanigans upstairs did not do anything to scare that door into unlocking itself. Okay, let's go talk to Mr. Titus Hardy. It's you again. What is it? Well, Titus, let's go over the rape victim again. Again? Seriously, man. Fine. Fire you said, away. You said you partied. Cool. That's cool. But what did you mean? What do you think I meant? Did you karaoke? Yeah. Tons of it. All the songs. So you're saying the two of you were close? No, we just fucked. That's all. I'm not going to give you any details if that's what you're after. 
So put your dick away. Uh, mine's in my pants. You're always waving yours around. He really went out of his way to seem comfortable with this topic. That's all you're gonna get for now. He's doing a good job here. A commendable performance of I don't give a shit. Okay, enough about it then. Yeah, whatever. So she says she wasn't raped, Titus. Fuck. I knew that fucking whore couldn't be trusted. Hey, now. He says all this with his eyes and veins bulging. You've hit a nerve. Titus is furious. No, more than that. The loyal Titus feels betrayed. Yeah, take that, you bastard. For the record, Titus Hardy did not explicitly specify <laughs> the victim as a whore. Nor did he say anything about trusting her. Okay, thank you, Lizzie. Oh, shut up and stay out of this, Liz. He raped her. He was out of his fucking mind. You have no idea. It's certainly not a good idea to tell your legal counsel to shut up, but it works well for us. She's just in denial, asshole. You don't understand the traumatic experience. She's shutting down, and she doesn't fucking trust you. Whatever. Yeah, she's crazy, you know. A crazy bitch. You know the type. She's fucked up. Yeah, we got the racism, we got the misogyny, we got the whole package here with these guys. This is a diversion. Stay on track. Cut the bullshit. She told me the truth. Lawman, I'm at the end of my goddamn rope with you. I fucking told you not to push her. We didn't push her. And you went and pushed her. He takes I am gonna fucking... Something breaks in him. He steps closer as he says that last bit. I'm gonna fucking... Titus Hardy. Her voice rings through the room like a warning shot. Everett personally sent me to take care of this. If this goes south, we'll all be in the shit. But you, Titus Hardy, are going to be buried. Am I understood? Wow. Lizzie is not fucking around. When she's angry, she emphasizes the S. It gives her voice a strangely hypnotic quality. Her lips barely move as she speaks. Frankly, it's a bit terrifying. Someone has to rush in to break the tension. The second in command. Look, Copper. We know that that fuck was a rapist and a killer. We got him confessing to it on tape. Oh, a confession? Show it to him, T. What's the harm, right? Here, Jerkwad. Listen to this shit. And then come back and tell me the soldier of the apocalypse was an innocent man. Oh, this is an interesting turn. This is their last play, this tape. Their story is in tatters. A mess. It might be nice to listen to, but at this point, you don't need to. Where'd you get the tape? You think we go into this shit deaf and dumb? You RCM aren't the only ones who know how to bug people. There's no university degree for that. Actually, there are a few. Crypto analyst, <laughs> radio officer. Actually, there are numerous degrees you can get in signals intelligence. Yeah, like you have one, smart ass. Beer. This, that's in response to, he looks left. There's a beer there that he forgot. So you've bugged them. How? We have machines. We're in logistics. How do you think a harbor works? It's advanced stuff. Oh, okay. Like you handle the advanced technology stuff, Titus. Understood. You've listened in on their communications. How long? Since way before their chief started taking swing lessons. Things got nice and quiet after that. Which one of you is doing this advanced radio work then? It's not advanced. You just hold up in a coop all day, writing down what they say. It gets hot as hell in there. Nice, Angus has given us the details. Don't put yourself down, Angus. It's important work. The chief picks his beer back up to offer a silent toast. Yeah, man. They're like a radio genius or something. Those notes are some in-depth stuff. Indexes and shit. So what's on this tape? What's on it? We call it the Dorgon Omega Mix. You'll know why. Won't you listen to it? Now that is intriguing. You had me a Dorgunner. <laughs> nice. Why should I care about the tape? You lied to me. You don't care about evidence. The fuck are you a cop for, then? Big T. They don't care about getting the truth. They care about getting convictions. They are fucking keeping a score on their bulletin boards. In my experience, that is true. I won't be on your bulletin board. If you don't listen to the tape, we got nothing to talk about. Oh, we'll listen to it, you bastard. There's a lot of questions. 
If you ask them now, they'll just keep bringing up the tape. Listen to it, and they'll have nothing to hide behind. Okay, where can I listen to it? I'm sure we can find a tape player. Where can I listen to this? Why don't you try shoving it up your ass, genius? Thanks, Shanky. You're adding to this conversation. Yeah, play it with your ass, cocksucker. Oh my god. I'm sure we can find a tape player. It's not a problem. Your room had one. Or maybe it's too broken. I think we're carrying one. That's enough for now. I'll get back to the investigation. Don't forget your tape, lawman. Compliments and Titus Hardy. All right, fine. I'll listen to it. You do that. Oh, and keep it. Maybe you'll need a reminder of human ugliness someday. Thanks. I'm going to take off. You're an asshole. Here's the tape. We're going to listen to it in a little bit. Let's go upstairs and listen to it. Why not, right? Let's go into our old room. The tape player is still running with this mess we made. Okay, let's listen to the tape. What? What the heck? Maybe if we go into our inventory and we look at the tape. Tape. Door Gunner Megamix. A magnetic tape acquired from Titus Hardy. It supposedly holds a recording of the Mercenary Task Force radio communications recorded via a decryption station. Not a good omen. Requires a boombox to play. We have a boombox. I didn't even need to come up here. Let's interact. The porter reel is just what you needed. The reels attach to the apparatus with a satisfying click. The tape is rooted behind the magnetic reader. Why would we come in here just to put it away? All right, let's play the tape. You push, command set, and the tape starts spinning. Violent static and machine sounds fill the air. This isn't Remishan. This is a fucking village. I can almost see the elephants. Oh, wow, that's loud. The harbor. That's the son of a Valson crane. Valson? That's how you pronounce it? When this shit is done, I'm gonna tear that place up. Soldier of the Apocalypse style. Kill shit. Dogs and chickens, too. Oh, yeah, definitely the dogs and chickens, because they're to blame. Gonna run a room, Cordy. A real nice room. I don't give a shit. I'm fucking done. I'm done mentally. I'll fucking do them all in. Rape that disco cunt on the counter. You know, the dance of whore upstairs. Do it Kohoi style. Oh, that's that's very pleasant. Never did get that taste out of my mouth. That's the end of the tape. The lieutenant presses the button marked Arete on your porter reel. The tape stops spinning. What was that at the very end? Silence? End of recording. What do you think, Kim? It seemed authentic enough. Probably recorded off the shortwave, then edited to seem more incriminating. He sounded like he was on patrol around the harbor walls. But he did say he's going to do it. You can't edit words into someone's mouth. Indeed, but... Lieutenant looks at the tape. You are familiar with this look now. It's his look of suspicion. I agree. I agree. Who's this Cordy? Cordy could be short for Cortenar, one of the other mercenaries, the one he was talking to. Probably the mountain at the harbor gates. Mr. Right to Work. Yeah, we, we knew that actually. Well, we didn't know that that one was particularly Cordy. Oh, yes, we did, because the other one's a radio operator, and I think it's female. What's Kohoi? A village on the Samaran Isola in South Safri. Grad committed war crimes there, the kind of thing he talks about. The South Safri conflict is an ongoing proxy war between Grad and Safri. It has been hot for 12 years with the atrocities piling on, mostly committed by the Grad. You think he was there? Who knows? Maybe the tattoos would have an answer. We would need to know the story of this man's service. That seems reasonable. A symbol of Soldier of the Apocalypse style conduct in a civil environment. Okay, then, what now? And we remove the tape. I think we've got a few more questions for class here, don't you? This seems to contradict her testimony, at least to some degree. Maybe. You can say all the things you want. Doesn't mean you do them. Let's go talk to Classier. Okay, come on. Boys, why are you walking again? So frustrating. Out the door. Okay. Hello again. We just Officer, saw you. It's a fine day for questions. 
Titus Hardy gave us a recording where the deceased states his intention to commit rape. She puts her coffee cup down with a soft ring. As the porcelain meets the metal table, this does not surprise her. Did he? I never said he was a good man, or that he had good intentions. Only that he was never bad to me. She doesn't care. If anything, she sounds amused. On this tape, he specifically identifies you as the target. Mm, where did they get this recording exactly? It's intercepted radio chatter of the deceased, recorded via the encryption station. It's authentic enough. Does he say he's going to do it Soldier of the Apocalypse style? Those are the exact words he used. Yeah. That was practically his pickup line. She picks her coffee cup back up. A memory surfaces in her tired neocortex. It's not entirely unpleasant. Mm-hmm. Fascinating. Did he say whores a lot? Was he pretty much on the verge of doing it Kohoi style? Yes, Kohoi was mentioned. He wasn't actually there. He didn't do a tour, or at least didn't tell me he did. Would have been overkill anyway. He lived his own little Kohoi. It wasn't his everything. Well, why say things like that? Machismo? Yes. W was he bragging? Oh, no. I'm pretty sure he did all those things. Then integrated them into his idea of normalcy. To keep on living. Until they just sort of turn into his, um... Uh... What's the word I'm looking for? Persona? Running joke. I was gonna say running joke. <laughs> and it sounds like you didn't even get the good bits. Lely's punchlines got way, way funkier than that. He was like the Semenese conflict, the Kohoi massacre, and the 36 famine in Yezut all rolled into one person, then cast in Orani ceramic armor, which he wore in bed and in the shower. Okay, that's weird. When he said he was done, and done mentally, it didn't sound like a joke. It sounded like a deeply troubled man. Hold on, he said he was mentally done. That sounds like a broken man to me. Well... Maybe I pieced him back together with my magical personality. Weren't you afraid of him? Afraid of what? That tape the Hardy Boys recorded? Your mother probably never told you this, but girls are evil. Yeah, my mom didn't tell me that. Had I the physical robustness and social support, I'd be in Kohoi. I would be tearing it up Soldier of the Apocalypse style. Uh, sure you would. Sure. She wouldn't. She doesn't have the full hoy in her. <laughs> Did he tell you he had actually done any of those things? He and Martinez, I mean? No. We were too busy laying waste to our own nervous systems to direct any of the fury outward. He seemed... He seemed happy, I guess. At ease. As much as a man like him could be. There is a small measure of pride in her that she could quell the rage in such a being. Yeah, I guess she should be proud of it. What kind of man was he? Before you go, ask for details. She seems okay to talk about it. I can't remember if Logic was the one we should trust, but I'm going to ask. Thank you for clearing that up, miss. Whenever you're ready. I'm interested to hear what Titus Hardy has to say now. Okay, thanks, Ken. She takes a very small sip of her coffee and smiles. Flashy, now that you've had some time, can you tell us more about the victim? Like, for example, his name? Actually, officer, I didn't know his name. I just called him Lely. A nickname? I guess. He came from Lely's dad. It's short for that. And it was his army name, apparently. He said his real name wasn't his. I tried to pry it out of him, but it was no use. Wow, he just didn't even identify as who he was when he was born. Lely's dad. That's a good start. We have a few questions you can help us with. A few things a field autopsy alone can answer. Uh, this is that sound you heard was Kim tearing a page out of uh, his notebook and handing it to us. The young woman cranes her neck, trying to catch a glimpse of the page the lieutenant passed to you. On it is a list of autopsy observations recorded neatly in blue ink. Everything left to be clarified is in the column on the left. Where is Leilestad? The place, I mean. In Oranje, officer. It's, um, I think municipality is the term. A nowhere town there. The Leilestad municipality has few boroughs and even fewer cities. 
It's made of agricultural plots near the border of Gottwald. Executive Summary Cows, Silos and Wheat You are almost right, officer. That means his race was Occidental, not Mondial. I'll update the form. You were both from Orny? Yes. We were compatriots. Did that bring you together? No. He was too old for that. And from another part of Oranien Reik. I didn't even understand his accent. What brought us together was in Oranie. It was bad habits. Sex. Alcohol. And drugs. No love for Mother Oranie. But wasn't he a soldier? This could be worth pursuing. A military man, but not a patriot? No. He left the National Service after they taught him to do what he did on Seminine. He wasn't the flag-waving kind. He was the making money, killing people kind. I guess it takes all kinds. He was by no means a stupid man. <sighs> a people person. A small platoon leader. Certainly not a patriot. These are both lame. You don't seem like much of a patriot yourself. Mm-hmm. There is nothing on Muindi. The old, old world is dead, and we both knew it. Maybe Oranya did bring us together. In loathing. I love Ravishol, though. I hope she loves me, too. How old was he? He was 42. 42? Are you sure? I would have had him above 50. He had many scars that made him appear older. But no. The memory makes her smile. We even celebrated his birthday, like, some weeks ago. It was a funny two days. He had little reason to lie to me. Looks like you were right, officer. The lieutenant taps on his notebook once as though assigning some kind of point. Points are good. Have one, you old dog. Before we all die. Nice, and we healed. I'm not gonna say I didn't know this was a competition. Would he say that? No, he wouldn't say that. Better not to mention it. The young woman looks at you, then the lieutenant, then you. She's clearly sensing something. A spike in testosterone levels, perhaps. His eye color? Blue. L light blue. They were like... Like little blue galaxies, you know? It was strange, seeing those eyes in his fucked up face. Pardon the swearing. I do him an injustice. He wasn't ugly. And he had a beautiful, soft voice. Very surprising, what with all the scarring. It was quite something, watching him speak. He had a combat wound? On his chin and mouth? Yes. Severe. It made him look like half his face was cracking away in some strange smile. That and those eyes... That sounds nasty. Oh, yes. His hair, if you can remember? It was light brown, almost blonde. He darkened it with brilliantine, made it oily, not nice to stroke. I couldn't convince him to leave it alone. He had a tattoo. What did it mean? Oh, that. It's clear she liked it. You liked it? Quite a lot, yes. Let's ask her if she knows what it represented, even though we think we do. What did it represent? Do you know? It was a map of his life and the places he visited as a soldier. It was mostly for showing off to chicks, though. For showing off to chicks? How so? How? <laughs> Imagine him lying in bed. Freakish musculature laid out on the sheets. Scarred, of course. Tattooed. The sheets are dirty for some reason. Is this Oranis lit? Is this Oranis? No, I'm not going to say that. Let's not interrupt. He's smoking and drinking, of course. And his chest and shoulders and arms are studded with stars. Tens, hundreds of them. Maybe even thousands. And the woman goes like, What was this, baby? She points at the air with her sharp nailed finger, picking out an imaginary star when she said that last bit. And he says, That was too hardcore. Don't ask me about that. So she goes, okay, but what's this, baby? <laughs> and he's like, saw some bat shit there. Killed some loincloths. <laughs> and so it goes. Star after star. Port after port. Third world country after third world country. That was he's an done horrible things in every single one of them. That was an interesting little mini play. 
You were the woman in this? Oh, yeah. Can you tell us precisely what these mean, handing her the photo? No, thank you. I've seen enough of him dead. I can tell you what they meant without looking at them. Go on. He was a blue-eyed boy with thick arms, from a small town. He was also poor, and the government of Aranya needed some people killed, so they turned him into a grotesque killer. For money. He went to Killer Academy in Vredefort. Then he killed some people on the Seminine Islands. And on other islands, too. All of the islands. After this, he came to Revishol and got killed himself. That's not a very fun story. It is when you're high. It can be very exciting then. You have the tools to deal with it. It's not a very nice story to remember when you're sober. A change of topic? Could it be love that did him in? It very well could be, yes. What do you mean? What do I mean? I have no idea. I don't even know what you mean. Love did him in? What does that mean? He told me. Love did him in. Yeah, this is Superstar all the way. That's not funny, officer. Her voice is like a slash through the air. Her shoulders tense up. There. She momentarily lost control over straight back guy. It appears that she feels guilty. Do you feel guilty? Of course I do. I'm hungover. I feel guilty about everything. Do you feel guilty about what happened to him? Among many other things, yes. I could have done something. There's always something he can do, right? Ask me something else. What is this? An interrogation? You didn't tell her this was going to be an interrogation. We ordered a toxicology report. Any idea what it'll show us? A real rainbow splattering of pharmaceuticals, I bet. Barbiturates, amphetamine, sildenafil. How much does the toxicology report cost the police of Revishal? I can do it for half of that. Save you some money? Make some myself. <laughs> it's quite expensive, miss. But we'll manage without your help for now. Yes, I think we will. All right, I think we're finished with this line of questioning. And we hand the lieutenant back his notes. All right. So we're getting a bunch of 10-point experience things here. The lieutenant puts the slip back in his notes and observes the young woman for a moment. Coolly, gracefully, she pours herself more coffee. Let's talk more about this so-called assault. Not my favorite topic, but okay. Oh, I'm still not telling him, telling her there was a bullet in his head. Are you sure you weren't raped? I'm 89% sure. Does that mean you're 11% not sure? You know how it is. Do I? Do you? <laughs> Do I? Hmm. Maybe you don't. She flicks a bit of ash away. The ash lands on her jumpsuit. She brushes it off. There are numerous cigarette burns on those silvery scales. Easy to see now that you're closer. In conclusion, officer, I'm going to go with a mild to medium not raped here. Lieutenant, I don't know what to say about this. I'm sorry, miss, but we need a definite statement. Let me make this 100% clear then, officers. I was not sexually assaulted. Would I be this flippant if I had been? No, she wouldn't. That makes total sense. Thank you for telling all of this, miss. How about we, you know, change the subject to something more lighthearted now? Yeah, let's uh, return to this later, miss. Oh, a thought. Wait, stop. That man, bloated beyond all recognition, was 42? It's what she said, yes. Below the damage, the weeks of decomposition, all the swollen indignity of mortality. He was 42 years old. Where is this going? How old are you? That's where this is going. 45,000 liters of raw alcohol has left its disfigurements. What lies beneath, you wonder? That is a good question. You could ask either one of them. Miss, how old do you think I am? Huh. How old do I think you are? She's buying time to formulate the best answer. Look who's finally awake. I don't know. One million years old? Twenty-one? Seventeen? How old are superstar police officers usually? I think I'm circa forty-five. You're not. He squints at us. Sure he is. You know, age is just a number. Yeah, that's, that's what old people say. Yes, but for him, that number is higher than 45. <laughs> Wait. 
This requires scientific measurements. All right, bring it on. I'm not afraid of the truth. To the laboratorium. Oh, thought gain, date of birth generator. Hey, that's cool. Also, I realize we're standing here wearing the curus. Isn't that what this shirt is called? Of the man that she was kind of in love with. That is really, really rude. Before we go talk to Titus again, let's read that thought. It is called the date of birth generator. Date of birth generator, no research positives or negatives. It takes seven hours and 15 minutes. Your face looks like it's 58 and your body feels like it's 60. Your mind feels like it's lived for one day or a hundred, both longer than they ought to be, the day and the century. But for how long then has this thing attached to your sentience walked the planet's crust? Time to start racking those brains of yours, Elder One. When and where, where were you born? I'm very curious about that. We might do that one. We only have one left. We're going to have to really think about this. If you have suggestions, please drop them in the comments because I doubt we're going to finish the, the one we're currently on today. We've got 16 hours and 47 minutes of in-game time. Our next step is to talk to Titus again in this game of he said, she said. That's for next episode, though. Thank you for your viewership. I love you all very much. Please remember to spay or neuter your pets.